Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to go through a short tutorial on how to set up Discord for your classroom. So Discord is a powerful real-time communication tool that a lot of students use, and there's a lot of customization, and it helps with organization within the classroom. So before we start, I just want to mention that this is my setup. So you have to decide which of these features you want to keep or discard depending on your school or country's policies. Luckily, Discord gives us a lot of flexibility in, uh, in determining which features we want and which ones we want to not use. So the first thing we need to do is make up a username and password on Discord. So I'm just going to log in. I've already registered myself and you see that I do not have any friends and I have not started any servers. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that my user settings are set the way that I want them to be represented uh, because once I start adding students into my server, then it may be too late. So first of all, I would uh, probably just set up my profile, put a picture in here and just have the uh, all of these details set up. Uh, you might want to also go into privacy and safety and make sure that you have all of the checked the way that you want them to be. If you're in particular a little bit uh, uneasy about students being able to direct message you, you might want to turn this uh, off, allow direct messages from server members. So it really depends on your comfort level uh, with your class or whether or not you want your students to be able to message you directly. So the second thing is we want to be able to create a server. So every course you would set up a different server. So here, I'm just going to add a course and you can see that uh, creating servers, there are a lot of templates already set up by Discord. I'm actually going to create my own because there are certain things I want to put in my classroom that may differ from these templates. So I'm going to set up a server for me and my friends. And here is where you would probably upload a photo. It's probably a good idea to put a different picture for every course you're offering or for every class you're offering. And then you're going to label the name of the course. So I'm just going to say this is comp123 and I'm going to create it. And you can see that at the default, it offers you two text channels, or sorry, one text channel and one voice channel. So the text channel is the general and it, it allows everybody in the in the server to be able to type in messages. So here is kind of the message board and you can see all of the messages being represented here. Currently we have no members. So you can see here we have no members uh, aside from myself and we can start to create some text channels. And what these text channels allow us to do is to be able to organize the different things that are happening in our course. So I usually like to put text channels uh, as a uh, as an assessment, or sorry, divide them up by assessments. So for example, I have this uh, assignment one discussion. I might have another text channel for assignment two discussion and so on. If this is a class that has group projects in it, I would recommend creating another channel for a group meetup. So group meetup channel. And generally, if the type of groups that you allow in your course is the one that you allow them to pick their own groups, this is actually a really good idea because this is where you're going to meet up your groups. Another uh, text channel that I would recommend putting in is one for queue. I'll talk about that in one second. This is particularly the channel that I'm going to use to queue up students whenever there's an office hour or whenever I need them to line up in some way. There's a lot of other text channels that you can that you can have depending on the setup of your classroom, depending on what you want to do with or what kind of activities you want to do with your students. There's also a voice channel, which is very helpful for office hours and for connecting with students. So the voice channel uh, does contain uh, the, the audio ability as well as being able to share the screen. So maybe we'll take a look at that in one second. So I have all of these channels and once we set everything up, once we uh, decide that the channels are good, uh, the next thing that you probably want to do is take a look at the roles. So if we go into the server settings, so I'm doing a right click and server settings. And if you go to roles, we'll see that there's a bunch of roles that we can uh, define. Now there's already been, there's already a default role, everyone that has been applied. So basically what this means is if I go into the message board and I type in everyone, I'm tagging everybody that's currently in the server. So this is pretty helpful if you have, let's say a group of a hundred or, or something um, that you just want to message everyone. 
you can probably imagine in such a large group that oftentimes there is a kind of a spam of messages going out and people just talking nonsense. Uh, but if you want someone a, a message to be directed and uh, want to highlight it to everybody, like for example, you know, we have an assignment coming up or I changed the, the office hour times or something else, uh, you can very quickly just mention everyone and they are going to get a notification uh, just to, to highlight that message. So just to say, oh, this one is important and so you should read it. Now, the other thing is that the everyone tag does not is not available to everyone. So uh, if you're just a student that's on the server, you're not allowed to tag everyone by default. So this is actually good for a student, for the admin and for the teacher to be able to send out messages to everybody. So going back to this, uh, these roles, if we take a look at the roles one, one more time, we can actually create other roles. And so usually creating other roles would be beneficial because these roles allow specific communication with a group of people in the server. So for example, if I have some TAs in my class, I can make a role called TAs and I can make them purple. And I can set associating permissions for these TAs. So I typically like to give TAs full permission. So I will turn on the administrator for them. So whoever I add in the TA roles, uh, they will have the full admin access. So if I go to manage members, right now I have no members aside from myself. But if I make myself the TA, you'll see that now I've been added to the group and I can add as many people as I want. So when my TAs join the server, I can go in and I can actually add them uh, to this group and they will be able to do all of these things here so i don't really have time to go through all of these but they are things like are they allowed to kick people are they allowed to censor are they allowed to create uh, create uh, different channels in our group and are they allowed to uh, do, you know add other roles and, and stuff like that so i'm happy with this i'll save this and uh, let's say that I would like to actually, let's go back in here and I would actually like to add another role. So going, uh, continuing on the context that let's say this course offers some kind of group project. So typically in a group project, I like to have one student that is the team leader. So I will, I will have a team leader role that I can very quickly just contact all the team leaders and they can you know do their job and, and maybe uh, pass on another message to their teams so when I create this role again I can go into permissions but I can set different permissions so let's say t uh, team leaders uh, allow us to be able to I'm sorry I'm not sure what I did there um, so team leaders uh, are allowed to let's say Mm, view channels, they can manage channels, uh, they can manage, well, I won't man let them manage roles, but I will let them manage the channels because maybe I'll let them to create a channel just for their team and to set permissions that way. Well, okay, let's just save changes here. So you can go through all of these and, and just check off the ones that you will allow the team leaders, for example, to, to do. And again, you can, you can create other uh, subgroups, I guess, for your for your class and so after we do that we will be able to contact those people by giving the the tag here so if we can do um, something like if we wanted to talk to the TAs then we would do TAs and then we can type in a message to the TAs and all the students have these uh, have this access as well so they have the access to be able to uh, talk to specific people they can also send to team leaders for some reason right so that's the general setup of a course so I think if we do something like this, we have a we, we can set up a pretty elaborate course and we can actually set a lot of permissions. There's a lot of uh, different customizations we can do just within the roles and just within the server setup. So you can definitely play around with that. Uh, so let's say I'm happy with this course. So the next thing I need to do is invite people. So uh, by default, the invite link looks like this and it expires in seven days. And generally at the start of the course, I think this is good enough. But if I do want people to be able to join at any time, I'll just say never expire after never. And then I'll generate a new link and copy this one. And this is the link that I'm going to send out to all of my uh, students. So I publish this either on a uh, course management system or I send it out through email or some other way that I contact the students, put it in slides or something like that. And then I just watch all the students pop up in the server. So let's say this is a student and they want to be able to add, they want to add themselves into this server. So what they can do is again, go to add server. And this time I'm not creating my own because I'm joining a server that already exists. So I'm going to join a server and I'm going to paste in the link that's there. 
and I'm going to join server. And then you'll see that this person, student2, has now joined the server. And I guess I can do that with... Uh, Okay, so I've, I have another account, student1, that also joined the server. So you can see that you have a bunch of students who can join here, and, uh, and now we can start communicating. So for example, if I have, if uh, student2 wants to uh, communicate, we can say hello, and that's going to send it out to everybody. Uh, also, we can do something like at TAs. They, they're sending out a message about something. Um, so send that out and notice that those uh, TAs that are under those roles, they're going to say, I have a direct message and this gets highlighted on their uh, on their wall. And so this kind of highlights all the important messages that are coming in for those roles. All right. So that is basically how we do the basic communication. And then of course, you can see that there are different text channels that the students can go into and they can discuss within those text channels, uh, depending on what kind of questions or what kind of discussions there are. Now, generally posting these questions, everybody is going to benefit from it so that everyone can chime in or uh, everyone can uh, can answer. And uh, you as an instructor would probably just go through at times and just make sure everything is legit and make sure nobody is breaking any of the rules or typing bad language or anything like that. And you can even uh, comment on some of the things that they say. All right. So the last thing that I would advise to add into a course would be the customization that Discord offers. So there are a lot of Discord bots that are basically custom libraries that you can add in and you can expand on what your server can actually do. And a lot of these bots are actually free. So the um, the one of the, the sites that offers these bots is top.gg. So if we navigate there, we can actually search for certain bots that are very useful for a server. So I'm just gonna mention a couple of them right now. And uh, one of them is called Group Flows. And I really like this bot because it's attached to this website that allows you uh, allow members to be able to create schedules, uh, create events that they can share with the rest of the class. The first thing we can we have to do if we want to use this bot is to invite this bot. And by the way, if you take a look at these bots, <clears throat> all of them have stars associated with them out of five. They also list how many servers they're associated with. And then there's generally a vote uh, of how many people like it. So these bots don't have a lot of malicious code. However, they, you know, they do take personal information. So be very careful in using them and use your rules for uh, crap detection. So here I'm going to invite this bot and it's going to say that, okay, now you are logged into this Discord server and I want to be able to do these things on your server. So if you are okay with that, then I'm going to uh, pick the server that you want. So if you have multiple servers, you can do this many times. So for this course, for example, I want to add this bot to this course. And so I continue, it'll say that I want to be able to do these things. Um, you can also take away some of these permissions. Although if you do, it may render the bot kind of useless. So I'm going to authorize this bot and I'm going to tell it that I'm human and hopefully this will be able to connect it to my server. So now this is uh, successful. If I go back to the server, you'll see that GroupFlows is joined as a member of the group. And essentially this is a, uh, it, it is listening to my chat. And in order to invoke one of these commands in GroupFlows, we need to be able to uh, give it some uh, terminal command and terminal commands usually start with a slash so if you do slash you'll see that these are the things that we can do in group flows in, in group flow um, and uh, one thing in particular we can do is we can do new and if we do new then what we can do is create an activity name actually i won't do this here but i'm just going to jump over to my student account so let's say i'm a student and i want to create like a study group so i'm going to do new and I can create a new uh, study group. So let's call this just a study group. All right, so study group, and then I can also optionally put a time in there as well, although I don't have to. So uh, for example, I can do Wednesday, uh, 12 p.m. All right, so I can say this is my time, and then uh, group flows is going to, oh, actually, the first time we use it, it needs to detect the uh, the time zone that I'm in. So once it detects the time time zone, I should be able to do a new one here. So new, uh, let's do study group. And then now we can say, let people vote, uh, decide the time, or we can enter a time now. So let's say, okay, I want to, I want to be responsible for this study group. So I want to enter a time, let's say, and, and this is actually a you know, there, there's some pretty good uh, AI going on here. So I can say, for example, tomorrow, uh, 6 p.m. 
right? So I can say 6 p.m. submit and pick a, uh, pick a reminder option. I can do 30 minutes. And so now you can see that I, I have this uh, here already, right? And uh, if anybody else wants to go, they can actually add themselves. So for example, if you jump over here, you can see there's another person, uh, there's, a, there's another person uh, on the server. I can say I'm going and that will be added there. Uh, and another person cannot, uh, maybe they can't make it. So you can see that that third person gets added over here. So this just increases the functionality of your server. And there's a lot of these bots out there that you can just look at and they're, uh, they're free to add on your servers. Some of them uh, are a little bit hard to use. You have to be aware of their workflow. But after you learn the workflow, it's actually pretty good. Um, so, uh, so that is uh, basically uh, group flows. I'm going to search for another bot here just to show you another example. There's another one called Qbot. And Qbot, uh, I'm going to use this one. There's actually a few of them named Qbot. But I'm just going to hopefully be able to see that. So um, this one has four stars. It's pretty good. Um, it has a bunch of servers that it's used uh, that's used on. And a Qbot is a uh, channel for, for queuing. So if you remember earlier, I created a channel for queue. Right. And so this is uh, really what I use this for is anytime students need to line up. So let's say I'm offering online office hours or something like that. This helps with the queue. So if I do an invite here again, uh, it will tell me some things that it needs to do on my server. I continue. I'm going to authorize it. And hopefully this will connect properly to my server. And if I go back here again, I should be able to see that it's added itself. So the next thing we're going to do is jump over to the queue. And I'm going to invoke these commands. So you'll notice that here we have the queue bot commands. We can do um, queue and then queues add. And we'll do the queues add and then we can add the channel. So I'm just going to add this into the queue channel because that's the one that I'm in right now. And it will create a queue that will allow people to be able to join or leave. So this is, again, good for if we have an office hour or if there's some queue that I need the students to be in so that I can process them in, uh, in the order that they came in. So for example, if our student one jumps over to the queue and we can, we can do join. And right now we can see that one person is, is in here. The first is student two. And if I go to another student, I go into the same uh, queue channel and I join, you'll see that student one is in there as well. So this is just the way that I would process it. So for example, if it's time for a student two to be able to uh, come in, then I can do DQ user and I can do Q. So this is the, this is referring to the Q. So I can DQ this user, uh, student two. And so student two will be removed. And so uh, generally at that point, I can tell them to join me into the, in the voice channel. So if I start up a voice channel, I can tell them now you can you can join the voice channel and here I can uh, share screen I can turn on camera I can uh, do a lot of things uh, in the office hour or I can directly come over here and I can just give them a call okay so one one or the other uh, and then later when I'm done with student two then maybe I move on to student one I see student one is the next one on the queue so again I can DQ user from the queue and the user is student one. Okay, so again, I can tell them the same thing, come join me in the voice channel, or I can just directly give them a call, and then now you can see the queue is empty. All right, so when I'm done with uh, office hours or whatever this, uh, this thing is, I can do queues, delete, and I can delete the queue. All right, so just to give you a few more ideas on uh, the different bots uh, that are out there as well. So picking up from the idea from before, uh, if we were doing a, a group or a team project in our classroom, then I can do this bot called a random team generator. And you see random team generator uh, allows you to be able to create teams uh, randomly. This is really meant for gaming, but it actually works pretty well for uh, creating groups within your server as well. Uh, another one, which I won't demo at this point, is uh, called Mr. Poll. So this one actually is uh, pretty good for uh, polling. So you can create polls like, like something like this, right? And you can have people interact directly in the server. All right, so that's really all I wanted to go through, and I hope this was helpful. So I'll see everybody in the next video.